Hello again, folks. So let's talk a little bit about uh, other kinds of growing random network models. And in particular, we're going to talk about a hybrid model now that spans between these uniform at random models and the preferential attachment model. And, uh, you know, the idea here is, is, again, we're looking at random network models. And now what we won't want to do is, is try and match degree distributions that are out there in the real world. So we have a variety of, of degree distributions that are out there in the real world. Um, some of them look more like uniform at random, some of them look more like preferential attachment, but we want a way of actually fitting a model so that we can say that this one looks like, uh, you know, entirely preferential attachment or 80% preferential attachment or some percentage. So we have some idea of exactly what is going on in, in, in uh, generating different degree distributions. And, um, the, the idea here is that uh, we'll, we'll be able to fit these models um, to data. So again, when we looked back at the uh, Notre Dame World Wide Web and so forth, and we end up working with preferential attachment, preferential attachment gave us a curve which has a slope of minus three um, and uh, would be linear in, in log log plot. Um, at least to our eyeballs, that looks like it might match this data pretty well, but we'll have to actually get a, you know, test it um, uh, carefully to see whether or not that's a good match for what's actually going on in those data. Um, what's interesting, though, is when we look at, say, a co-authorship data, um, so here this is uh, co-authorship, this is um, data from the uh, uh, economic co-authorship uh, data sets of uh, Goyal, um, uh, Vanderlei, and Morocco Gonzalez. And in particular, um, we see that there are fat tails, right? So we've got higher degrees and, and lower, more high degree and more low degrees than uniformly at random. But this is hardly linear, right? So if we drew a line through here, it's not linear. So we've got something which looks like it is um, has fat tails, but it's not well fit by a power distribution. And so can we say a little bit about what's going on in terms of, of how this network might have been formed uh, via this kind of growing process? And again, that's a natural kind of uh, model to look at because co-authors are coming in over time and forming new relationships as, as they're born and gaining relationships over time as they mature. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at a simple hybrid model, and this uh, hybrid model has been discussed in different papers. Um, I'm going to talk about a version that I did with Brian Rogers in 2007, the very simple version, um, and will allow us to really span between these and then go directly and fit to data. And the idea is, is the simplest one you could imagine in terms of, of forming a hybrid of these. Um, what we actually do in the paper is a, a, a little richer, but I'm just going to simplify this for the sake of, of our analysis here. Um, what we're going to do is uh, a, some fraction of the new links that are formed at any point in time, a fraction A, are going to be done uniformly at random, and 1 minus A will be found via searching the neighborhoods of friends. Okay, so what does that mean? That means, you know, um, there's a bunch of nodes which are already out there, Let's suppose that they've formed some network, so they're already existing, um, and a new node is born, and that new node first forms some links uniformly at random. Okay, so let's say, let's do this with blue. So it forms uh, a couple of, of links uniformly at random, and then what it does is it picks new nodes to link to by looking at the friends of this. So this node, maybe it identifies this node then, and then forms some additional ones. Instead of uh, searching uniformly at random, what it does is it meets the friends of friends. Okay, So it begins to look at the friends of the existing ones and then form uh, links to those um, nodes. So it picks some nodes uniformly at random, and then also searches the neighborhoods of those nodes. So you just, for instance, would go onto the World Wide Web, you start looking through some web pages, and then you start clicking on links from those pages, and then finding nodes. Or you meet somebody, and then you meet some of their friends. So this is a very natural process, and what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, one fraction formed uniformly at random, 
And then the rest, the one minus a fraction, formed via meeting friends of friends. And what I want to convince you of is that that second part is going to look like preferential attachment. So that'll give us an explanation for how preferential attachment might actually be working. Why would, it, why would we have preferential attachment? Okay, so let's think about meeting friends of friends. So um, you're forming A, uh, M of your nodes uniformly at random, and then uh, also meets 1 minus A times M of their neighbors and attaches to those nodes too. And the distribution of, what's, what's important is the distribution of neighbors' nodes is not the same as the degree distribution, even with independent league formation, okay? So a neighbor is more likely to be of high degree. And, and let's go through the logic of that. Why, why is that true? Um, so let's think of a, of a network. Suppose that we were in a situation where half the nodes had degree K and half the nodes had degree 2K. Okay, so some of them are, are, are twice as connected as others. And let's just do a, a, a simple thought experiment. So pick a link in that network at random, and then pick a node at one end of that. Okay, now there's a two-thirds two chance that the node you'll find is actually of degree two, 2K, and a one-third chance that the node is of degree um, K. So it's actually twice as likely that you're going to find the node with the higher degree as compared to the node with the lower degree, even though they're evenly distributed, even though there's half as many of each. I mean, they're, they're half the population is of each. They're equally likely in the society. Through this process, you're actually going to find the higher degree nodes with more probability. Why? Because they have more links. So if you find any node on the end of one of their connections, if you find one of their neighbors, you find them, right? So here, if you select a link and then you select a node on one end of it, is if I have twice as many links, it's twice as easy to find me in that network as it is to find somebody who has half as many links. And so if you're looking at my, at my friends and then trying to find me via my friends, uh, if I've got twice as many friends, I'm twice as easy to find in that system as somebody who has half as many friends, okay? So the idea is that if you're actually looking through a network and finding people by looking at nodes and then looking at their friends, you're going to be more likely to find higher degree nodes, and then we're going to have a form of preferential attachment. Nodes that have more friends are going to be easier to find. They're going to get more friends through this process, and uh, it continues. Okay, so a very simple process, very intuitive and natural one now that will explain why we'll get preferential attachment. And then as we vary this parameter A, we can have things look like just forming uniformly at random net network, or if we're doing things mainly through the network search process, we're going to tend to have most of the links formed in ways that are going to favor better connected nodes. Um, so what we're going to do, we again, uh, the, the, the chance of, so randomly find a node, um, randomly pick one of the nodes it's attached to, and that's this sort of finding the friends of friends bit, and chance of finding some node via this second part of the procedure is proportional to its degree. We find it if you find one of the, the other nodes that attach to it. So if it, if it had twice as many people attached to it, it's twice as easy to find. Okay, so now what does this model look like then? Um, fraction A formed uniformly at random, one minus A via preferential attachment. So we can go back to our mean field approximation, do exactly what we did before. We're gonna still have the starting condition that when you're born, you form M links. And now what we're gonna have is a fraction A of my new links over time are gonna look like the uniformly at random M over T and a fraction 1 minus a are going to look like they did in preferential attachment, which is proportional to my degree over 2t, right? So there's an m uh, over 2tm. Uh, I've divided out the m's. So we've got this simple differential equation. And if you solve that, so now we've got another differential equation. Um, you can just check that this differential equation, if you differentiate this with respect to time, you'll get this back and the initial starting conditions. So this is the solution to that differential equation. Okay, I'm not gonna go through solving differential equations. This is a, a relatively uh, 
standard differential form, and this is the, the solution for that differential equation and uh, with that starting condition. Okay, so now we have a, a very nice system. Again, what this does is tell us what an expected degree is at any point in time for a given node as a function of how much time has gone by and what its birth date was. And therefore, we can then solve this to figure out which nodes are going to have degree less than some amount at any time. That gives us the degree distribution, so exactly the same procedure we've been doing uh, a couple of times before. And so here, the nodes that have de expected degree less than d at some time are the ones for which their, uh, their equation for what their degree is is less than d at that time. And here, um, there's an expression uh, just was simple to put an x in here to simplify this in terms of notation, to, uh, substitute in x is equal to 2, 1 minus a, um, and that uh, makes this equation just a little easier to read. So the critical i is the one for which um, this is true. So if you solve the, the i for which they're exactly at degree d, um, the, they solve this. And therefore, uh, remember, the f of d are going to be the, the fraction of nodes that were born after the ones that have this uh, critical i that has exactly that d. And um, so if you substitute in from the, the i here, uh, what do we get when we substitute that in? We get f of d is equal to this equation, where x is equal to 2 over 1 minus a. a. So this is a slightly more complicated expression than we had before. And it looks um, partly like, so we've got uh, a d in a denominator raised to some power. Um, the power here depends on uh, the parameters of the, uh, of the a and so forth. And you can check um, that when you look at this equation, as a gets near 1, so that all of the links are being formed uniformly at random, then this is nearly a negative exponential distribution. Whereas as a gets close to zero, then x just becomes a two. Um, this is going to disappear, this is going to disappear, and we're going to get our, our one minus m over d raised to the two power. Um, the differential, the, the uh, density function then will have a, a minus three. So this will look exactly like preferential attachment. So this spans between those different distributions, and as we change A, we're going to end up with a distribution which looks either like this negative exponential or begins to span out and look more like a power law distribution as we let um, A become close to zero and almost all the links be formed via the friends of friends, which gives us uh, preferential attachment. Okay, let's simulate these things just to check. Um, so this is uh, after a thousand periods um, simulating uh, when m is equal to 2 and a is equal to half and you can uh, just check either the log of the distribution function versus the log of the degree or the log of the frequency. So this is, a, we know that the extremes that the expected degree is a good match for the actual degree distribution. Um, here, if we put it in the middle, um, it, it seems to be fitting well, so simulated degree distributions are coming out well compared to um, the actual degree distribution. Uh, so, so when you simulate with a half, you get a good match. Um, if you simulate with a equals one, so it's uniformly at random, it's a good match. Um, actually, interestingly, if you, this is just done simulations when a is zero, um, it's not exactly on, but this is one where we know the proof actually shows that uh, um, you get a good match, so it, it just means that for, for pre pure preferential attachment, you're going to need more than a thousand periods before this thing begins to, to be a good uh, approximation. Okay, so, so we've solved for a degree distribution, and uh, what we can do next is now we've got a degree distribution, a hybrid distribution that spans between these different extremes. We can start taking this to data and begin to back out what that A is in the data, how many links look like they're being formed more at random, how many look like they're being formed through the network search process, being meeting friends of friends, and then see whether we see differences in different data sets.